Hello there. Today I'm going to look at two strange thrillers. Uh, one is The Guest by Adam Wingard, another one is Lumberjack the Monster, directed by Takeshi Miki. So the fact that he made a strange film should not be a surprise to anybody. I'll start off The Guest, which is the, the older film, which, which I've only recently seen. It's one of those films I always meant to see, but never really get around to seeing. It just, it's just when, it, when that film would pass me by. So The Guest is actually a wonderful film. I really wish I'd seen it years ago. Because um, it is just brilliantly insane and crazy. So there's a second site have released a, a very nice package. It's a remastered 4K. You get lots of extras. And when Gareth would go on and do this, two of the Godzilla, recent Godzilla films, Godzilla Kong films. Um, so he's, he's, he's working his way up now. Um, but this was the film that put him on the map and it's probably the film that got him that job. Because it was it's really successful and really infamous for being a, a film by a young director showing what he can do. He'd done other films before that, but that's the first one that really kind of put him on the map. So it's basically the story of Dan Stevens, who's this guy who is a war veteran who comes to 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 a small Texan town to meet the family of his one of his old soldier pals, sort of like Rambo and First Blood. <laughs> But um, and it basically pays respects as guys died, and just be, he comes in. He's very polite. He's very caring. He talks to the mother. Says he's sorry for the loss. He didn't doesn't mean to intrude. He's just on his way through town, so he thought he'd come as he was nearby and give his respects on his way to where he's going next. He's been recently. He's recently left the army, and he talks to the. The mother, the daughter. The daughter is played by Mika Monroe, who you'll recognise from It Follows and a bunch of other indie films. And this is one of her early films. And she's a bit more suspicious of him. Um, the son is Billy at school and he is interested in this guy who seems to have it all together. The father is initially suspicious, but once he has a beer with the guy, he finds he can bond with him really easily. The father's having issues at work. So... Even though he's only passing through, they invite him to stay a couple of days just to um, just so they can find out more about their son before he died and what was going on there. And he, he, he slowly gets himself into the family unit a little bit. And he's very polite. They insist the daughter is nicer to him. So she takes him to a party where he makes a few contacts. And he has sex with somebody. And he's just slowly gets tendrils in the family a little bit more than the daughter really wishes he would but he has a good effect on the, the son he shows him how to defend himself and it's that thing of you know there's something off with this guy before anything happens but he is actually helping the family he is helping the mother get through things but she's blind us on to the fact that there could be danger here even the daughter makes a mixtape for him and she's trying to be nice to her, but she's just something off this guy, something wrong. So she's just hoping he will leave in a couple of days so that that's it done, dealt with. She doesn't have to deal with him anymore. But he he just thinks he needs to correct the family problems before he goes. He needs to protect, to help the father get his promotion through means that are very dubious but funny as hell. He helps the son defend himself against bullies in a bar scene that's just hilarious and brutal. Um, and he deals with a scumbag daughter, scumbag boyfriend of the daughter. Unfortunately, she thinks, wait a minute, he was a, he's a bit of a scumbag, but he's actually okay, he's not that bad. And, and this is where she starts to investigate and actually send an uh, investigation about who this guy is to the army. Which triggers him off because the guy who he says he is is dead. So he's obviously not that person, and so who is he? And suddenly the army is very interested in him and are sending lots of people to track him down and kill him. So obviously, suddenly the film goes from a suspense movie to an action movie, an action horror movie. And that's the great part of it is like it, it goes from like this dark comedy about being too trusting and being. The idea of how grief can do funny things to you and it can drop your guard or, or raise your guard and it's this thing of how grief's just strange 
does strange things to people and how someone can take advantage of that. So it's this little contained story for the first half of the movie. Then it goes crazy and becomes a hitcher for the second half where um, Stevens becomes like unkillable machine of a man <laughs> who can take down anybody. You get lots of gunfights and um, lots of people who don't deserve to get killed get killed. You know, I think people didn't do anything get killed by Stevens because once the problem is once he knows that you know that he is not who he says he is, something in his brain tells him to kill you. So it's it's dangerous. So um, the the vibe of the film is of this kind of twisted, you know, late seventies, early eighties genre movie. Because in the seventies and eighties, genre movies could switch from one thing to another quite easily. It wasn't a big deal. It was like you can start it one way and then you can switch it when that plot runs out and you can do something else. This film goes back to that idea. And even though the film wasn't running out of steam in the first plot, it switches to the second plot with ease and it's like, and all the psychological motivations for the first half are still there and can be developed, but in a different context, so it gives it a different feel. And it's just hilarious. It's really funny. It's got this just twisty sense of humour. And the thing is, you know he's not who he says he is. He just waits for the shoot he drops. So it's not like, there's a massive t surprise he's not who he says he is. I don't really mind giving that away because I think that was in the trailer. I mean, there's this sense of it's, it's you're waiting for the other shooty drop, you know. And it's a film that knows you've seen all these films before and it's playing with it and he's, it's having fun with it. And it's like, what if this crazy thing happened? Instead of being so, what if this crazy shit happened? And what if this led to other crazy stuff? And then other crazy stuff and it's just this dark comedy weirdness to it that it's just pretty funny so uh, like, the guest is just wonderful the performances are all loads of fun yeah no no because they're arch and they're kind of um we have people who have seen all these films they know what's expected from these kind of performances and it's a little tweaked it's a little odd it's got a sense of humor about itself and it's just a kind of enjoyable weirdness to everything it's just there and um, it is funny it's a dark comedy throughout and it just has this thing of we're going to enjoy ourselves there's this thing where we, you've got people making this film but they're going to make a film they want to see it's not that they're trying to be conventional and see what would everyone want us to do it's like you know we, we want to see a film that even if it fails initially people can see it later on and enjoy it because it's like we, we're going to show you what we want to see in this film so that's the joy of the film it's, it's like it's not compromising you either like it or you don't like it, it doesn't matter, you know. I mean, if you like it, you're going to watch it tons of times. If you don't like it, well, tough. So it's got that kind of committed feel to it that's really enjoyable. And the action, when it delivers, really delivers. It's, um, as I said, Wimgard got the uh, Godzilla Kong gig not long after. I mean, he did one or two other films, like Blair Witch and uh, Death Note in between, but it was the guest was the thing that was still propelling them. Because the other two films were well made, but they weren't, didn't have this, the surprise of the guest. And um, and we see the Godzilla films, Kong films he makes, they're also a bit weird and funny and twisted and they've got a weird sense of switching genres all the time. So you can see it's the same director. <laughs> and he loves Neon. He loves Neon. It's wonderful. Um... And his approach to action in this film is sort of like the Kong action scene where it's like destroy as much as possible. Why have a set where you can burn it down? Why have a set where you can destroy it with bullet holes? It's that kind of thing. Um, never give this director matches is obviously the thing I'm trying to say. So, um, yeah, so the guest is wonderful. Now, Lumberjack the Monster is another Mickey weird film that's also wonderful. That this one you can get on Netflix. You can watch it on Netflix. I highly recommend it. It's it's not as bad shit as some of the Mickey films. But the thing is, if you if you didn't know it was Mickey directing that, you'd say this is a crazy bad shit film. <laughs> you know, it's just because he also did an audition and Dead or Alive or you know 
and a bunch of uh, Ngozu and a bunch of other weird films. And this one, even though it's weird, feels tame compared to some of his earlier excesses. But it's still a wonderfully weird film. It's a, um, a psychopath versus a serial killer, as the, the plot. Now, in a Hollywood film, this would be just a, you know, a bunch of set pieces and that would be it. In this one, it's not. It's about the idea of this psychopath who is trying to work himself out or try to kill this, get a serial killer who's going around killing all these other people. But they don't know why. They don't know what's going on with him. And the whole film, if you've ever seen Peeping Tom, the Michael Pell film about... Um, mental tests and children. Um, you'll know where this is coming from. I, I'm not spoiling it. This comes in the first minute of the film. Like, you, it's established early, and you're just waiting for the cops to catch up. Um, and it's always got that kind of weird thing that Raising Kane had. Raising Kane also was a bounce off Peeping Tom. And it was like, what we do this is a black comedy horror film. Which Lumberjack also does. It's this thing of like, it's a bit extreme. You can't take it entirely seriously. But the fact is, because it's a lot of bit extreme, you have a lot of fun with it. But also have these weird moments, and you can have characters in there that you normally never be able to explore because it'd have to be the villains. So it give um, there is a purpose to create a kind of weird atmosphere, and it's just this psychopath who's trying to work out what's happening with it in his own mind. Why are people getting killed? Why is he been targeted by the killer? And who is the killer? Because the killer's got the face of this lumberjack character from a book. And he's covered the, the killer's covered the face with that. There's plenty of people who could be. Um and you're just watching seeing which who's who's the red herring and who's the actual killer. And you're watching the psychopath who's a lawyer try to work it out. And it's it's a funny film. It's a really dark, twisted film. Really enjoyable. We have a lot of good character Japanese character actors having funny little bits in the film. The lead actors are enjoyable, but it's a film where Miki allows his actors to relax into the parts and just have fun with the parts and don't care so much about being sympathetic. Just just be interesting, and it's it's just really enjoyable. It's not top level, Miki, but it's really good. It's, uh, it's it's that kind of weird, kind of um, twisty genre movie that direct, good directors make sometimes, just as a like a little exercise. But they can also do use the melodrama to do like, things about weird psychology. They can do some strange set pieces within it, and the whole film is this strange atmosphere that's uh, sad but also really funny and. Um, you can have fun at the idea of the of what's sanity and what's madness and the weird blurrings between it and and just how we're all kind of crazy in different ways but some people are really crazy and it's just a wonderful dark comedy horror with some nice bits of gore throughout and just some nice bits of humour in it twists and turns in interesting ways it's well paced I've heard complaints that the end section's a bit too long, too talky, but I never found that. I, I was interested in what they were saying, so I was quite happy to watch all that. So I liked it because it was a, the, the last third was a full-on melodramatic bit of weirdness, bit of atmospheric weirdness that wasn't really about who's killing who. It was actually much more about the kind of weird psychologies that were at play at that point. So it depends what you're looking for. I mean, you might find this is a bit too talky but there is a lot of gore in here throughout as well so you you know if you're wanting gore it's here but you also you get a funny a little weird peeping tom influenced psycho horror movie so it's just a lot of fun I'm, I'm trying not to give away any of the gags you know i mean you can figure out who the killer is i think like um but it doesn't really matter because it's, it's more about the weird character beats and the weird world that's created. So, anyway, go watch both of these films. Neither of them have the most original plots, but just the way the directors twist them and get, do their thing with them make both work really well. So that's me for now. 
I'll see you later. Bye.